Hello, my name is Hans, W1JSB, and I'm here to present and demonstrate one of my latest radio creations, something I call the Bumblebee 20, or BB2T for short. And the name mostly comes from the color combination of the case and the solar panels on top, but it's also a radio design to be used outside while hiking or camping or for emergency purposes. It's a 20 meter radio, meaning it operates on the 14 megahertz amateur radio band. It's a Morse code or CW transceiver built into a Pelican case. On the front, there's a pressure regulator and it has a handle, which is convenient for carrying uh, the panels are wired in series to give roughly 14 volts with full sun and 200 milliamps of charge. So it's a trickle charger for this radio, which has an internal lithium ion battery. Let me go to the side here and show you quickly. These are uh, rounded end caps and they are for the key. That's actually how you send code. Well, one of the ways that can be used for sending code with this radio. Nothing too amazing on the back. On the other side, there's an analog voltmeter, and that is showing how much voltage is being converted from the solar panels. And next to that is a, a little watch set to UTC. On the bottom, nothing too extraordinary, just some rubber feet that work pretty well and gripping tabletops or whatever surface. If you notice, this does have um, a place where you can lock the case with two miniature locks. So open it up and see what's inside here. Um, I'll go over sort of the less interesting part first, but um, that's the map here, which has um, amateur radio prefix uh, for call signs. So when you're working stations all around the world with this radio out in the middle of nowhere and you don't have any way of telling who it is you're talking with other than asking the person, you can look up here quickly and see um, where they are located. I just put that on there since there's the space and it seemed like a nice feature to have. Uh, below that, this uh, is actually an aluminum channeling that uh, encloses the wiring for the solar panels. And on the side here is the coax which brings the current down to charge the battery inside. At the heart of this is a Small Wonder Labs SW20. And Small Wonder Labs is no longer in operation. So these radios are not available anymore, unfortunately, because they're absolutely amazing radios. Um, they were dubbed the best deal in amateur radio for quite a while. They were about $55 for a transceiver kit. And I bought many of them and built radios a lot like this, but this is by far the most advanced so far. Um, so that's inside there, along with a lot of other things. Uh, so much to go over here. Here's the charge port. That's where you plug in for the AC adapter to keep the battery charged up. It has a built-in uh, 4800 milliamp hour lithium ion battery claimed. It's probably more like 3000 or, you know, 3 amp lithium ion. Um, and it lasts for quite a while. The current drain on the SW is low, very low. In fact, you can run the receiver directly off the solar panel with no battery in full sunlight. Um, but it's, you know, it's enough that a full charge will get you a couple of days of casual operation outside. Um, and with the trickle charger, you should be able to maintain it uh, indefinitely, 
if it's in the sunlight long enough. Of course, it's a very low trickle charge, and the charging circuit needs to be redesigned, either with a AnyVolt Micro or some similar circuitry. Um, so that's the charging port. It's a standard jack. I forget the size. Uh, this is RF gain, uh, the uh, switched potentiometer, so this will actually turn everything on, which I'll demonstrate in a moment. This is the volume. This has an audio amplifier built in. These two are for the filtering. It has a very nice filtering system. Down to 60 hertz. Continuous variable. This changes uh, the center location of the filtering. Uh, like a you know, it's a notched potentiometer, so it sticks right in the center where it should be normally. Uh, Ten turn tuning pot. Uh, it covers all of the CW portion of the 20 meter amateur radio band. This is for the keyer, which uh, is built in, and it just changes the volume of the keyer for the menu settings and the side tone, if you desire to use that. This changes the keyer speed. Uh, goes from 5 to 50 words per minute. This is the memory button, which works for sending your call sign at the touch of the button very quickly, easily, or using the combination of the touch keys on the side, you can go through the menu and change all of the various settings, the weight, the, all the beacon modes, um, you can do so much. You can change the side tone, frequency, things like that. There's a long list of options, Conf highly configurable. Uh, these are Forward and reflected power meters, SWR, so you know if your antenna is um, resonant or not, um, if you need to change something, you know how much output power you have, um, so you know if everything is working properly or not. Uh, SWR bridge is mounted right here underneath the panel. BNC connector, standard antenna connection. Here's the LCD, illuminated LCD screen that displays the frequency, the operating frequency. This is the voltmeter. It's a digital voltmeter, illuminated LCD as well. And these LED lights along here are part of a zero beat indicator. So it tells you if you're tuned right into the station you want to operate. Right if that makes sense. If you're a radio operator, you know what I mean. Uh, okay, uh, speaker, built-in speaker, a 2-watt, 8-ohm speaker. Um, so that's pretty much it on the top panel. You can plug in uh, an external key, like a, a straight key. Plug that in right there. Or and if you don't want to use uh, the built-in speaker, if you need to use headphones to keep the outer world a little bit more quiet. Uh, it's stereo, but not really stereo. Um, and that can be used at the same time as the speaker. I don't know why you would do that, but it's possible. Or you can turn the audio amplifier off completely like that and just use the headphones or whatever external speaker system you'd like. So that's about it. There is one more little thing that I will show you, but that would be best to demonstrate. So we'll go ahead and turn this on. I have a 20 meter NFEDS antenna right here inside the house. And that's strung up horizontally going across. So I would recommend this antenna for this setup for simplicity. Usually when I operate outside I use it vertically so the radiation is right at the horizon. It works very well for long distance contacts or DX as it's called. So the antenna plugs in right there very easily. So you see the lights, 
you see the lights light up for the zero beat indicator and you hear FB sent, that means that the, the touch key or circuitry is working as it should. Um, so, one thing, this switch here, I forgot to explain that, that actually switches between the solar panel. So this activates the solar charger. So you turn that on if you want to be using that solar charging, or you can turn on the zero beat indicator. So it's one or the other, and I forget exactly why I did that, but there is some reasoning to it, which I can't think of at the moment. I built this um, early, quite a bit earlier this year, like in the summer. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here we are. Now we might hear some interference from my phone, actually. I forgot to put it in airplane mode. So that might be kind of annoying. Yeah, that's what we're hearing. But anyway, you see, we have 12.1 volts. That's about right. You know, it charges up to 12.4, 12.6, somewhere around there. Drops to 12.1 pretty quickly. And then hangs around, you know, 11.9 to 12. That's about nominal, I think, for this battery. Oh, there we go. We're hearing some. So... So this blue LED indicates that a signal is being detected, and it will generally flash with the code being heard. Can we focus better? There we go. And then, this means that we're tuned a little bit too high, so we need to tune down. That's still a little too high. Once we're on the green, then we're right where we should be. That means that our side tone will match their tone. RF gain, this will turn it up. There we go, we can hear it quite a bit better now. Now you have to work in between, you kind of go between the RF gain and the audio amplifier to find a comfortable volume and optimum receive sensitivity. And here's the filter narrow it right down. Sound, it works very nice. It's beautiful. So we'll go ahead and tune around a little bit. Start tuning up from here. I'm not sure how active the band is right now. I'll start going a little faster. Okay, so we'll tune down a little bit. Okay, the band's not very active right now. Uh, let's go to the QRP frequency. How to send CW with this. These sense skin resistance. One is for the dits, the other for the DAWs. It's iambic. This changes the speed. Let's turn it up here a little bit. We got the side tone up a little bit. Turn up the audio amplifier. Asking if the frequency is in use. Oh. I hear something right there. What is that? Oh, it's probably from my cell phone. Okay. Um, turn the speed down a little bit. This is what I wanted to show you. This is another, this is a little built in straight key. It's a tiny little switch. So, that can be used if for whatever reason the touch key fails, or it's just kind of fun to send that way. I like to, anyway. Um, so that's showing our forward power on the top, reflected down below. So we have a pretty good match right now. And we're putting out roughly two watts, a little bit less, 1.7 watts. Full scale is two watts, I think that's how I calibrated it. Okay, so... And another way to send your call sign once it's programmed in. Very simple. If you want to call CQ, 
Well, this is difficult to do recording, but oh, here we go. It's just that combination. So it's calling CQ, CQ, and then it'll send the call sign that's programmed in. And it should start going again. Oh, maybe the repeat option is not set up. I guess that's disabled, but it can, if you configure it right, it will continuously send your call sign, CQ, CQ, and that's nice. I use that when I go out hiking, you know, I'll set up the radio, if nobody's on the band, I'll call CQ, let it do its thing, I can get up and go and take pictures, or stretch a little bit, walk around, and if I hear someone call back, I just go back to the radio quickly and answer their call. Uh, what else? So that's the speed, showed that. I think it needs to be uh, calibrated because it's supposed to be five words per minute all the way at the lowest setting and 50 here, but changes in the characteristics of the capacitor or something uh, make it so that's not true and you have to go into a calibration mode, which is very easy to do. I just don't remember the combination of keys at the moment. Um, I think that's it. If there's anything else, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or visit my website, which has more information and a page where you can contact me. Radioset-go.com Radioset-go.com Okay, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. 7-3.